morning that I thought I had a very long stay in Canada, six weeks. Then all of a sudden, I'm struggling for time. <laughs> because I have to be leaving Canada in the next uh, 24 hours. And there's so much that I would have loved to cover. Amen. Amen. But I thank God for his goodness and I thank God for making this time available. So we're going to make the best use of it. One thing with God is that it is not, is nothing with him to save by few or by many. It will not be by the length of time. It will not be by the brevity of it either. It will be according to his divine will. Amen. 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 When I came in, I began to, I opened up two areas. And uh, these two areas are broad in themselves. And so I'm just going to focus on one area this morning and trust God to bring forth ministry. Amen. Amen. We started by looking at this fact that God understands the human weakness. He knows that as people we live in a world that is totally different and separate from the spirit world. God understands that. He also understands that you have limitations as human beings. He understands that by reason of certain things that has been planted within you from the fall, you have certain cravings that limit you from his presence or embracing his presence. So he decided to help. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah 52, the Lord said, I look for a man to help them out. And there was none. He said, I searched. I looked thoroughly among men. And nobody was qualified or could bring them help. So my right hand brought help to them. Amen. Amen. By himself, God decided to help us. And this is what he is doing. At this time, God wants to bring humanity to the estate he has designed them for. The devil interfered with that plan through the fall. And you know, very much like our God, when the devil thinks he has made something of a success, God takes that particular thing he has done and uses it for his own praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Maybe man would have struggled with so many things unknown to him. Like Paul said something. He said, why did God bring the law? And now we are saying don't walk according to the old covenant, the law. So why did he bring the law in the first place? Then he explained it. He said, this is what happened. Man just discovered that he was dying and he did not know why he was dying. You know, since creation, man has not lived for one day. Only Jesus has lived more than one day. Because since he resurrected 2,000 years ago, he has not died. Um, doesn't it Bible says he dies no more. Hallelujah. So he's the only man who has lived more than one day. A thousand years is as one day. Amen. Amen. No man, Adam didn't live up to one day. He died the very day he was created. Because he lived for about 970 or 960 something years. Nine plus change. Nine hundred plus change. <laughs> 
never lived up, with, up to a thousand years. He died. So man, technically, I've never lived for more than one day since creation. But God created man to live forever, not for just one day. He is not even, because of the fall, he is dying and he didn't know why he was dying. And so God brought the law so that sin can manifest. Sin was hiding and destroying mankind. Amen. Amen. Sin likes to walk in darkness. It will hide. And, you know, man will go on and because of sin, diseases will enter, you know, cursed circumstances around you, all kinds of things, death. And that was how man was ending up. So God, God's right hand brought salvation. Amen. The first thing he brought was the law. Now, with the law, there is knowledge of sin. Now you know why you're dying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So when the devil thought, oh yes, I have done it. And they cannot, they, they would, and he was enjoying it. In Romans chapter 4, the Bible said that God decided to bring the law. So with the law, there's the knowledge of sin. Satan was happy. Okay, now he can't help himself with sin. No man can help himself with sin. You understand that? And before you could think again, the hand of God in Christ Jesus brought salvation. Amen. 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 Ha, glory to God. Hallelujah. And he came in one day and announced a mind-boggling program. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord is the Jubilee. And he announced a jubilee. That was why the Jews were very angry. Who does this man think he is? He announced a jubilee. Do you know what the jubilee was in Israel? In those days, every 50 years in Israel, there was a jubilee. During that year, all slaves were free. Everybody in bondage was released. You are free to go. Slave owners have no choice but to let slaves go. If you owed anybody, the debt was written off. It was automatic. You don't make demands for it anymore. If you bought land from somebody who got impoverished and sold his ancestral land, and it was in the hands of a merchant, in the year of Jubilee, it will release it. If that land went through 10 buyers, it will return to the owner, the last seller, the last one, the last one, until the land got back to the original owner of the land. The Jubilee was like the reset button in Israel. Every 50 years, God will reset everything. And remember, everybody, God divided the land, and everybody had land. But some people, by the time it's 30 years into the, you know, into the jubilee, their land was gone because they got so poor that they had to sell their ancestral land. Some of them became slaves. They even sold themselves into slavery. And, but in the jubilee, everything was reset. Everybody came back to their wealth, to their land, to their liberty. If your hands were in chains, you were free. You celebrate. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Jesus now comes around and announces a jubilee that brought total deliverance from sin, from sickness, from disease, from limitations, from imperfections, from everything. He announces it and the Jews were outraged. 
How can you announce Jubilee? By the way, who is your father? How could you announce Jubilee? Praise the name of the Lamb of God. He didn't answer them, but he was the hand of God, the horn of God in Israel that brought salvation to the people. Every person he met, he forgave their sins. Amen. Amen. And then gave authority to his disciples. Within this Jubilee period, anybody you forgive their sins is forgiven. Anybody you retain their sins is retained. And this is the reason why we, when we met, so we meet some people and they are doing it, your sins are forgiven. And they wonder, are you God? Only God can forgive sins. But Jesus Christ is God. And he authorizes his disciples to forgive sins. Amen? Amen. And then sicknesses, people were paralyzed, came to him. And they were, have you ever wondered why he didn't sweat? Because it was Jubilee. There is a divine reset button over your life this morning. Amen. God will reset many things. Amen. If the devil has helped you to ransom in an area, there is a jubilee reset button that will reset it. Amen. He has no choice. He will leave you alone. Why? Because Jesus came and announced the jubilee. Amen. As children of God, we really need to learn how to walk in this liberty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God on high. This is the reason God, when that jubilee is announced, and that jubilee is already 2,000 years old, and we are in the last seconds, and God is about to bring those who have embraced this jubilee. First step to embracing the jubilee is to be born again, to be born from above by faith in Jesus Christ. It's why I keep telling Christians wherever I go, if as a Christian, don't just follow religion. Ensure that you have the real thing. They say born again, and then in your life is really not working. Now there are many people are born again. We are all born again because we go to church. No. The new birth is an experience. You know it. My mother once asked me, how do you know this born again thing? I, and this woman wasn't as educated as I was, so I had no way of explaining it to her. I said, now, what do I do? So the Lord gave me wisdom. I said, mommy, I said, we have heard around as we were growing up that people confessing their witches. He said, yes. So I said, Mommy, do those who are witches know they are witches? He said, of course, they must know, otherwise they won't be confessing it. I said, yes. When people are born again, they know it. Know it. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you do not know it, nobody is going to sit down and argue with you. You will know it. And Jesus Christ says it is a must. You must be born again. The new birth impacts God's life. Something of divinity to you. Yes. That is a seed planted inside you that will grow until the whole man is redeemed and takes on the whole nature of the almighty God. That's the concept of being born again. That's where the jubilee starts. And then we went to the baptism of the Holy Spirit because God now gives you his spirit to help you. The new man operates by the Holy Spirit. That is where baptism of the Holy Ghost comes in. Many don't want to accept it. Many churches say it doesn't exist. No, but it's not about what the church or any man says it is about what the bible says jesus said you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in jerusalem in judea in samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth now we are moving to the final stage the feast of tabernacles Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I could talk about that this morning. 
but we will concentrate on helpers. This is the last feast when people are going to all around the world see the Lord God himself appearing to humanity through men and women. And God knows that that transformation is not possible for humans. Only God can do it. And so he has sent help us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's not expecting you to do it on your own. But he expects you, like we heard this morning, to be open. Yes. If any man say he has no sin, he's deceiving himself. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful. He's just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I like the way our sister put it, continually. Amen? Amen. Continuously. I mean, she made the difference between continual and continuous. I didn't know that before. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, continuously cleanse us so I can stand complete every time Amen. in the righteousness of God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. We started this by looking at the helpers. We are now going to read from the scriptures. In five minutes, I will do a recap, and then I will take the remaining two. Amen. Amen. God has sent four helpers to help bring us to the throne. Put up that figure again yesterday. Oh, right. And we're going to look at these four helpers from the book of Ezekiel and the book of Revelation. Let's begin by reading from the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because we've already, some of us have already listened to this, so I won't need to waste too much time on it. Amen. Amen. Verse 4. John was in the spirit. Uh, and he saw these things. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne of the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne. There was a sea of glass, like unto crystal, and a midst of the throne around about where four beasts full of eyes before and behind. The word is living creatures. Ezekiel calls them living creatures. Verse 7, the first beast was like a lion, the second like a... Uh, calf, the third had the face of a man, and the third beast was as a flying eagle. Amen. Amen. And the four living creatures had each of them six wings about him, which means these were people set to minister to my men, mankind. Amen. Amen. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now the put up the figure. Now the duty of these four living creatures is to draw attention to the holy of holies. Take note of this. This is the tabernacle of God. Everything in the Bible and everything of God's relationship to man, everything God says to man takes its reference from here. The entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is to be interpreted in the light of this. 
because this, as you are seeing, represents Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The eternal tabernacle in the heavens, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, take note of this and observe it as I explain. We have the outer court, we have the holy place, we have the holy of holies. Now, we have four living creatures here because this is where that throne was. We have four living creatures there, and these four living creatures, all we heard them say, beyond their descriptions, was holy, holy, holy. <laughs> it's the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's see what it says. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Their duty was to announce the lifestyle in the Holy of Holies. And their duty is, as we are going to see, draw men who are traveling along this journey and bring them in their path to that place. Amen. He would take them and help them, yes. knowing that you could not help yourself, knowing that you, were, you, have, you had faults. God knows it. And he decided not to throw you away. <laughs> he decided he will help you. Amen. And he said he has ordained and know that these four living creatures to move, traverse these courts, looking for men and women who have a heart to follow him and to help them. Amen? Amen. When he sees your heart, he knows where you are going. He helps you. If you are not going anywhere, he wouldn't be helping you. You don't need help. Amen. Amen. Turn to the book of Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Amen. Amen. Verse 4. And I behold, and I looked, and behold, a wild wind came out of the north. A great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof was the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Take note. Revelation said beasts. And uh, Ezekiel is telling us that these were living creatures. Creatures that has life. Creatures of life. They were made by God for the purpose of helping you and I come to the throne. The holy of holies. They are the ones who through the mighty power of God, show the holiness of God and bring you into his holy of holies. And they announce a body of people that shall come. It's all talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ was, he is now, and he is to come. Remember, Jesus is head and body. Yes. Hallelujah. So the one to come includes you Amen. and me. Amen. Over whom Christ has become head. Amen. 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 Verse 6, and everyone had four faces. Now we are talking about, there's another description. Four living creatures. We have four different beings. Each one had one face. But when they stand together, they cover 60 degrees vision. One face was lion, one face was a calf, one face was a man, the fourth face was an eagle. But now, look at what Ezekiel described. Ezekiel is describing four living creatures and each one had four faces. Amen. Amen. You have a total of about 16 faces, yes. but four sets. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's move on. 
Their feet were straight feet. That means they were a people who walked with God. They teach you to walk straight. Amen. Your feet are straight. They are not unbalanced. You know, my daughter here was talking about the, you know, um, limitations, the blemishes that would not allow. That was the prayer I, we met when we came in. Limitations, the blemishes that prevent you from being a priest. One of them is, you know, a broken foot. But these creatures do not have a broken foot. They have straight feet Amen. under them. The implication of a broken foot is that you don't walk straight. Mm -hmm. Up, down, up, down. You understand that? You limp. Now, let's look at this. These creatures are the ones that are responsible for giving you straight feet. Amen. They heal your feet Amen. and you are able to stand spiritually. Amen. You are able to walk with God Amen. without faults. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said that the feet, the sole of their feet was like, you know, the sole of a calf's feet. Can you imagine that? What did you use the calves for? Calves were used for labor, to work in the farms, in agriculture. You tie, you know, graders to them and they pull them along. And they make, they produce your wheat. Amen. And he said, they are feet. these were people who will work. Jesus Christ have calves feet. He labored. Amen. Amen. I, I am amazed sometimes at the level of labor that Jesus Christ went through. He would go and pray all night, go into the mountain and pray all night. And he would come back, a crowd would be waiting for him, he would continue. And he would preach for three days and three nights, nonstop. And then he's the one that would say, look, these people are already fainting. Let's give them food to eat. And the disciples said, we have no food, let them go. Jesus said, look, if these people even live here, they will faint on the way. So you give them something to eat. And they don't have enough food, he performs a miracle and feeds 5,000. One man. Have you ever thought of that? Try not sleeping for three nights. Eh? <laughs> you know, we, as young people, we experimented with many things. There was one time I decided I won't sleep. I went for days. When I'm sleeping, I will shake it off. I'm feeling sleepy, I will shake it off. Then when I had finished what I thought was my experiment, I had won. Now I went, ate, and I said, okay, let me lie down. I slept for some 48 hours straight. I didn't wake up. People around me were wondering whether anything had happened. <laughs> when they wake me, I say, look, I'm tired, I want to sleep. They said, there's nothing wrong with him. I'll turn the other way. 48 hours, I was sleeping throughout. That day, I stopped such experiments. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But we have a master. He will pray all night. When he comes out, he will meet a crowd and he will continue to preach. Have you ever thought how the Lord will talk to 5,000 people without a public address? There were no microphones in those days. And he spoke, his voice would be heard by 5,000 men and women and children gathered. 5,000 is quite a crowd. And to talk to them without a public address. The Lord was a tough man, man, he was. Anytime I think of it, I say, only God could have helped this man. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 8, and they had the hands of a man and they, under their wings and, they, and on their four sides and on their, and they had, they four had faces and their wings. So the wings were joined one to another, talking of oneness in fellowship, unbroken relationship and koinonia. 
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is raising a body of people who will have genuine koinonia. Amen. Not one that is broken, where one person is complaining, one person is murmuring. I don't like what Sandra did. The other day I went to her house, she didn't give me enough water to drink. And then is, uh, I was at her place. I did, you know, what the brother I make her did to me. God, uh, you know, forbid such things amongst us. Amen. The wings of this we are joined yes. together. Glory Amen. To Amen. Yeah. I can feel what my brother is feeling. He can feel what I'm feeling. I know what my sister is going through. He, she knows what I am going through. Their wings are joined together. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. As for the likeness of their faces, they've all had the face of a man. Talking of our humanity, there is something about your figure as a man. I, I have not, I, I've commented on all others. I will comment on only the man face. There is something about this figure as it is. Why do you think God didn't make us like uh, kangaroos? Why did he make us like horses? After all, horses have better stamina. Why didn't he make us like other creatures that are resilient? Why did he give you this figure? Five fingers, five toes, you know, on each of your hand, each of your legs. And he gave you legs. He made you the way you are. Your stomach is where it is. Your chest is where it is. Your head is where it is. Your mouth, your ears, your hands, your nails, your hair. Even the hair of your head has a purpose. You understand that? The hair of the head, Jesus said, not a hair of your head falls without the Father's knowledge. David said, all my members were written in your books. All the elements of your being, the cells of your body were designed by God and made. We were made into this frame. There's something about this frame that is divine, that has the likeness of the Almighty God. Amen. That's why it is a crime to abuse this body. You understand that? It's a sin. In the Old Testament, the Lord categorically warned, don't, don't tattoo it. Don't set marks on it. Leave it as I created it. Blessed be the name. Why do you think God did that? There's some, there has to be something about it for him to be making laws, for you not to abuse it. Don't desecrate it with drugs and alcohol. Many things he will tell you, don't, don't do this, don't do that. Amen? Amen? We are no longer under the law, but that doesn't give anybody excuse to go and drink alcohol. You understand that? It desecrates the body. One church in Congo decided they will, that will cast out demons, you drink beer. So they bring beer to church, and all of them will be drinking and then dancing drunkenly. <laughs> you know, and then say they are rejoicing. That's not rejoicing, no. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. It's so important that we know this. There's something about this. And right now on the throne of the universe, running the affairs of the entire realm of the spirit, is a 33 and a half year old man, Jesus Christ. Because he died on the cross. When you resurrect, Time stops. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You don't get older than that. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lamb of God. Amen. From that day until now, 2,000 years old later, when he appears to men, he appears with the nails, the print of the nails in his hands and on his feet. Hallelujah. And he is running the affairs of the entire spirit world. And all authority is at his hand and he's about he's been pleading with men begging men to please come that is going to is about to expire when he returns he's not coming back as a lamb as i always say you know see they are they are mocking jesus right now christians will beg believe on jesus they will take them and slot slaughter them and say yay if their God is alive, let him talk now. And the Lord just receives them and puts them on the throne. And he's still pleading with men. Paul said, knowing the terror of God, we persuade men. We are still, this is the age of persuasion. That age is about to run out because the church age will soon come to a close. 
and when Jesus returns, he's coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Lions don't smile. Even with their little ones, they don't smile. <laughs> Try and go to a place where lions eat, where they feed. The little ones stay away. Because once it's on the table, if a young one messes around, it becomes part of the meal. <laughs> so lions don't joke. And the Lord is coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The judgment will be stiff. And so this is why we are, we are begging men. As servants of God, this is what we are doing around. As missionaries, we are pleading with men. Please, receive him as your Lord and Savior. Say, hey, is this sickness? Okay, <clears throat> out in Jesus' name. Sickness has left. Will you serve him now? Are you going to serve him now? Say, well, I don't have enough money. <laughs> okay, in Jesus' name, receive enough money. You get a new job. And if that, yeah, I, I know, but this my job is now the problem. Meanwhile, you were looking for a job. They prayed, you got a job. Now the job is the problem. For some, oh, I don't have a child yet. If everybody have a child, it's only me. Why does God hate me? Is it child? Receive a child. And then they give birth to child. And then she starts coming back, coming late to church. Why is this baby children? Eh? They are not allowing one to serve God the way we should. You see what we are doing with God. This is the age of grace. That's what the age of grace tolerates. But in the kingdom age, it will not be tolerated. You understand? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. My brother there is laughing. You know it's true, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, I want you to pay close attention. I'm laying these foundations to, you know, for those who have not been here. These four living creatures are around and they are moving across the entire tabernacle looking for those who are ready to go on to the fullness. Amen. They are ready to serve God with all that they are, all that they have, everything about them. They are ready to go to the throne. They are not interested in what is happening around in the world. They are ready to go to the throne. This is their attention. And whenever God finds such, these four living creatures appear. They, take, they provide the help you need. And we're going to look at how to deploy these living creatures. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have said this is the help of the wayfarers. Why is it wayfarers? One of our young daughters asked the question yesterday, what is wayfarer? Okay, now turn to Isaiah chapter 35, verse eight. Hallelujah. Just scroll to that place. Isaiah 35. Thank you, Lord. I, I will take verse 8. He said, And highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, the wayfaring men. This is that scripture. I call them wayfarers, wayfaring men. The word means a pilgrim. Someone who is a pilgrim. Somebody who is a traveler. He is going somewhere. Display that picture again. Where are they going? They are moving from this. These are the nations out here. They are moving from there, from the east, and they are going towards the west. This is east, this is west, this is the north, that is south. Amen. Amen. Yeah, north is supposed to be up, isn't it? But uh, the drawing shows it the other way. This picture should actually be here, the other one here. Because in Leviticus, it tells us that the candlestick is placed northward. And the table of showbread is placed, or rather that the table of showbread is put northward. And the candlestick is put southward. So that's, that's why I'm putting it that way. People are traveling across this. They are going to the throne. 
And so the way Pharaoh moves across here, Hallelujah. Ezekiel that we read tells us that they move like flashes of lightning. Mm. They move from this way, they move the other way. They are traversing the courts looking for those who are going to the throne and helping them. They have been set by God to help all those who are on pilgrimage. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, we are not going to look at this. Who are these four helpers? We began by sharing that the first one is the name of the Lord, which answers to the lion nature. Isaiah 27 tells us that The name of the Lord is a person. I had discussed the fact that the name of the Lord is a person. And that in the spirit world, there are no things. You do not have things. You have living things, beings. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 So, you do not have things. You have beings. Everything in the spirit world is alive. Like we said yesterday, if you find a tree in the spirit world, it has intelligence. It talks. It moves. If you have flowers, they sing. They can worship God. Even wind is not just, you know, elements. They are living things. You can see that these four living creatures came like winds. They came like wire winds, spinning around and moving, and it talks. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You have an experience, and you see a wire wind moving, woo, moving all around, and then it stops and talks to you. That's their state. They are beings created by God. The entire spirit world is alive. Air, if you find air there, it has life, it has intelligence, it talks, it's alive. So in the spirit world, you don't have non-living things. Everything is alive. Everything has life. Amen. Praise the name of the Lamb of God. And so God created these four living creatures to help. And if you are on your way, on the highway, moving on to the Lord, to perfection, these four living creatures will help you. Amen. Amen. First is the name of the Lord. We said the name of the Lord is a living being. When you call on the name of the Lord, he actually comes as a person. Amen. With eyes, with hands, with feet. And what Ezekiel now tells us is that when the name of the Lord appears, he has four faces. When the other one appears, he has four faces. Because you could call for any help from any of them. He that shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. They are saved. The name of the Lord, a, a strong tower is a place of ammunition where you keep ammunition. And when ammunition of men can do... Have you ever got, gone to NATO's ammunition store? Boy, it would be awesome. Now think of the ammunition house of God. What it will look like. The Bible calls it munition of rocks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alright. Now, we are going to move on and look at the second one. Second one is described as the word of God. That was the one we took yesterday. The person of the word. The word of God is a person. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is represented as the word of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. We looked at all of that yesterday. And we looked at how to deploy the Word. Amen. Amen. You speak the Word of God. Yes. Learn to, our daughter was leading us in prayers this morning. And we were speaking to things. Speak the Word of the Lord. Prophecy or prayer is not, Oh Lord God, help me now. You see how much I have suffered. Oh, is it only me? Even Angelina is doing well. 
<laughs> but only me in this place. Am I the only one in this world? Help me, therefore, in Jesus' name. You have not prayed at all. Amen. That Angelina is doing well is no reason for you to do well. You understand that? But is there a promise of God that also promises Rita the word of, I mean, the success that Angelina is having? Rita must go to that promise and hold it to yes. God. Yes. Say, Daddy, you promised. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. It's very important when you tell a father that he promised. Ah, even if they don't have it, they'll go and look for it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. When my children were small, I would really discipline them over some issues. And then uh, I disciplined my second son. So he was crying. And then the twin sister went to him and said, Look, don't cry again. Now. Ah, you know daddy will soon come and take us out now. And any time he, he disciplines us, he always takes us out. <laughs> I disciplined one person, all of them were preparing for an outing. <laughs> and that day, I was not ready to go because I had a lot of things I was doing. So my wife overheard them discussing it and came to meet me and said, wait, these children are preparing to go out. They say, any time you discipline them, you always take them out that you shouldn't cry again. And the boy actually stopped crying. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped what I was doing. I said, hey, children, are you there? Let's go, let's go, let's go. And I would have blown it that day if my wife didn't overhear them. I wasn't ready that day. But I went because these children were pleading what to them was a promise. By action. Amen. Yeah. God is, you know, grateful. He's happy. He's excited yeah. when you can remind him. Say, God, you said this. You promised it. You never fail. And you are God. And you begin to worship him. You know, when the Bible says we bless God, somebody, I was watching scripture, Potter or whatever, they, they argued about that. Hey, what, how can we bless God? Somebody raised it. And they were doing hermeneutics. They were discussing the thing. I refuse to say anything. But you see, that day, what does blessing God mean? Blessing God simply means that you are extolling God. You are telling God who he is. That is a blessing to him. Say, God, you're the creator of all things. You are my savior, the deliverer, the keeper of Israel, who neither sleeps nor slumbers, the gracious God who forgives all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases, the lover of the whole world, the Lord who loved the gates of Zion more than the rest of the dwellings of Jacob. And you begin to tell him who he is. That's what it means to bless God. What are you going to If blessing God is in the sense of giving him a gift, what gift are you going to give God? Are you going to give him money? They don't use money in heaven. He does not need it. Or are you going to give him, you know, flowers? He created them. Uh, you, the ones you have on earth are afflicted <laughs> by sin. So they are not beautiful enough. What looks beautiful to you? When God opens your eyes to see it, what the way it is, you will run away from it. Are you going to buy him a nice coat? He can't wear it. So what, what blessing are you going to give him in that sense? Blessing God simply is reminding him who he is and telling him what he has done. Praise the name of the Lamb of God. In fact, that's what the word even means. Go and look at it in the original. It means to extol, to lift him up, to tell him who he is. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. So the word of God is deployed by prophesying. When God has said a thing, repeat it. He said the lion has roared, who cannot fear? The Lord has spoken, who cannot but prophesy? That is it. You release the word of God. Evil people, they release things at you by enchantment. Sorcery simply means speaking at some things. They tell you now, I command you to begin to do this. And you start misbehaving, you wonder why. Because whenever you say a thing, it takes shape in the spirit realm to go and do what it is asked to do. If what you are calling for requires an axe, 
when you have spoken the word of God regarding it, a being comes up with an axe in its hand to go and accomplish that thing. That is the way Jesus said, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Amen. Amen. So when we are calling on the name of the Lord, let's be, when we are speaking the word of God, let's not treat the Bible like one literature book that we have somewhere. Read it though like literature, but know that it is more than literature. It has life in it. Read it and believe what it says and act upon it. You will be helped in your endeavor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm conscious of time. Let's take the third helper. The third helper is what I call the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. The person of the blood. And this person of the blood is the human face, the man face. The life of the flesh or man is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls because it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So the blood represents man. Hallelujah. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 63, look at this. The blood is a personality. Yes. Hallelujah. Our redemption, if any man is going to move, put up that picture, from the east to the throne, if a person is going to move from here to this point, only the blood takes you there. Mm. Nothing else. You can't even cross. If you become presumptuous and enter, you'll be carried out a dead body. You can't go in. It is only by blood in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins to the extents of the riches of his grace. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Now, Let's look at a few scriptures. I'm reading from Isaiah 63. I'll read Isaiah 63 from verse 1. Hallelujah. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? This is a glorious this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I speak in righteousness, mighty to I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. That is the answer. Hallelujah. Isaiah saw a being, blood. It was a, there was no, it was just a mold of pure blood from head to toe, dripping. And coming with speed in fury. Isaiah said, Who is this? He said, I, I that speak in righteousness, I, mighty Jesus. to save. It is the blood that saves us, that cleanses us. It is the blood that cleanses me. It is the blood that gives me life. It is the blood that took my place as redeeming sacrifice washes me. Snow, oh, than the snow, my Jesus, blessed Jesus, God's precious sacrifice. Isaiah saw this frame, having a human frame, but it was blood. He said his garments were dyed red. He said, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore are thou red? Why are you red in your apparel like this? Now listen attentively to the discourse. 
He said, while thou read in thy apparel, and thy garments like him that treaded in the wine fat. And then see the answer. The Lord was re replying, I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my garments. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. Amen. Amen. This is the year of the redeemed. He began to answer. He said, look, I treaded the wine press alone. There was no other man with Jesus Christ. Only him. When people tried to help him, when he was to go to the cross, what did he do? Peter had said, I will follow you to the end. And uh, he said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter said, not me. I No, never. I am the rock. <laughs> Nothing moves me. Okay. And you know, he lived true to his word. Because when they came to arrest Jesus, he said, yes, I will prove to these people that I am Peter. I drew his sword. I was going to remove somebody's head. Marcus. God saved Marcus that day. Marcus ducked. He chopped off his ear. Jesus said, Peter, this kind of warfare, they don't use swords for it. He put the ear, slapped it back. The man was healed. And he said, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Now, that was the only weapon Peter knew how to use. Now you've taken it from him. He can't use it. So the man was helpless. <laughs> that was why he started running. He started following from afar off. He became cold. He needed to warm himself. And true to type, when the, a maid, the housemaid, came and said, this is one of them. I know this uncle. He's one of them. <laughs> he, he's, he's from Galilee. I know him. Peter said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Amen. I know not what thou sayest. It's another way of saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Another lady. I don't know why it was that it was little girls that were accosting Peter. God, if it was a man or one very big woman, uh, they would say maybe he was afraid of their stature. Another you know, little girl say, I, I know this man. I say, I know him. This uncle is one of them. He's with them in Galilee. <laughs> and the thing that said, What are you talking If I know this man, you people are. I don't even know the man. <laughs> He's begun to crow three times. Peter knew he had sinned. He began to weep. Of course, the Lord forgave him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He did it alone. No other man was qualified in all of creation to die for the sin of another. Only Jesus Christ, yes. born of a woman, not corrupted by human blood. The blood that flowed in him was the blood of the Almighty God himself, made specifically by God. The passing of the blood was with the man Christ Jesus. That's why Christ Jesus is seen as a composite man. He's a many-membered man. Glory to God. One day, he began to weep before he went to the cross. He cried. And Lord, take this thing away from me. After he prayed and prayed, and he said, Lord, I will be done. The Bible said the angels came and strengthened him. The helpers, the four helpers came around him. They helped the Lord. They carried him to the throne. They helped him. They strengthened him. Why did Isaiah pen this down? Here is a being full of blood. He said, I will sprinkle the blood of the enemies upon my garments. In other words, I am blood shed. And because of it, many, the entire kingdom of darkness, will have their life taken out. Amen. He went to the cross. He was buried. He went to the realm of the dead. And he took out the forces of darkness. Paul said later, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly by his death on the cross. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It was the blood that did that. Let's move on because I need to cover the second one before we go. Amen. Amen.
In Exodus chapter 12. Let's look at this. The purpose of the blood. I want you to listen attentively to it. The purpose of the blood. Okay? Look at this. Number one. In Genesis chapter 4 verse 10. The blood cried to God. The blood of Abel cried out from the ground unto God. In Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 to 11, the blood of saints cried for vengeance. So blood talks. Blood has to be a person to talk. Amen? Yes. Number two, blood gives access. Open doors. If there are doors that are closed, the blood gives access. Opens the doors. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 3 verse 25. Sorry. Um, that is still on, in Luke chapter 11 verse 50 to 51. Revelation chapter 17 verse 6. When the heavens are shut against you, you can't pray. And it just appears things are not opening up. Remember the blood. Because the blood is the person with key to the very throne room. He opens. Glory to God. Number three. It is the blood that silences all accusations. When there are accusations against you, Satan knows how to do this. The only instrument of Satan is accusation, guilt. He knows how to make you feel guilty. He just calls you and says, but, but you. Eh? You that is deceiving men around. Or you that is, uh, you know, stealing things, telling lies. You can't even, you are not qualified, so forget you. <laughs> but if you recourse to the blood at such a time, he atones. He shows mercies. Praise the name of the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. In Romans chapter 3, verse 25, he says, Whom God has set for to be a propitiation, that is atonement, Hallelujah. through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. This is crucial. Remission of sin only comes by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this person of the blood is the one that effects it. Number four, the blood acts as our security guard. This is the person from God, the angel from God that is your security. Look at what it says in um, Exodus chapter 12. I think that's in verse 13. Amen. Amen. Verse 11, I'll read it from verse 11. He said, and they shall take, verse 7, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two sides and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Verse 11. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins guarded, shoes on, on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For, verse 12, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. Oh, I just love the Lord. He writes you a letter and he signs it. Hallelujah. You know, the way we write letters in those days, say, I am. Ricky, you know, you sign it and they know what you mean. The Lord finished writing, he said, I am the Lord. Verse 13, and the Lord shall be to you for a sign upon the houses where you shall eat it. Listen, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now there's judgment going on. 
what is happening is that that spirit of death is moving around and when it comes if you are covered with the blood there's a man drifting in blood standing at the door of your house and when the angel of death of satan knows better you can't confront him in the realm of the spirit it's not like human beings you know you cannot beat a man and you say especially if you are in Nigeria and you say me if you talk to me I will so deal with you you won't believe it and you start boasting and when people are when the person is coming at you you run to the in the spirit world it doesn't work that way you understand you know you know and there is sincerity. You don't challenge somebody you know can deal with you. So when the angel of death comes and they just see the blood at your door, they know better. They, they pass around. They go to the next house that does not have blood on it. And we are living in a time, as I said when we were dealing with the harvest, the end time will have two streams of harvest. There will be a harvest of death. The level of it is impossible for the ark of Noah to sink when the floods came. The floods that killed everybody in the world held up the ark of Noah. The problems that are killing people around and destroying them, if you were to be around the problem, that very problem will lift you up Amen. to divine heights. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. It will be a stepping stone for you. It is the blood that makes that possible. It doesn't matter what you are going through right now. All of the blood. When you remember the blood, when you remember the power of the blood of the Lamb of God, when you call on the blood, He comes. Remember to cover with the blood, to pitch with the blood. So when you say, I cover myself, my household, with the blood of Jesus, cover everything, your studies, your academics, your career, bring it under the covering of the blood of Jesus. Every morning and whenever I pray, I will say, I bring myself, my wife, my children, under the blood of Jesus for protection from the attacks of Satan. The enemy has a way of attacking your work. Bring it under the blood. When the blood is covering it, nothing of the enemy can attack you. This is the number one way to activate the blood. In prayer, cover it with the blood. Bring it under the covering of the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bring everything. If your, your boss is harassing your job, bring your, 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 your job under the covering of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Any aspect of your life that is harassed, bring that aspect under the blood of Jesus. In other words, cover it with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Number two, by sprinkling. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24, the spirit, blood of sprinkling that speaks. How do you sprinkle the blood? By speaking. Amen. Amen. You speak the things that are promised by God. You are actually sprinkling the blood. By the voice of the blood, I declare that it is well with me, for it is written. Say to the righteous, it shall be well with you. We learn to speak things by the voice of the blood. We learn to allow the voice of the blood speak for us. The, for the, the blood of sprinkling that word, speak it. Speaking is the way to sprinkle the blood. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then, of course, you have 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 24, also as a supporting scripture. Number three, by pouring. Amen. Why do we need to pour the blood? In the tabernacle, display that scripture. Uh, okay, the reference is Leviticus chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 25. But display the tabernacle picture again. I want to show you something. This is one of the reasons many problems persist in the life of Christians. Now, the love is killed here. The blood is collected. Okay? And the priest takes the first, you know, the blood that is collected, he comes and he anoints the bones of the altar to make it potent. He goes in. He comes here, he anoints the 
coins of this altar with the blood. He goes in, he dips his finger and sprinkles it into the mercy seat several times. He comes back with the rest of the blood here and pours it at the bottom of the altar. Why was the pouring necessary? Remember that the altar here is where sacrifices are made. That is where problems are destroyed. Amen? Amen. It's where you make a sacrifice to kill, to destroy things that are harassing you when you move out to God. If it is sin, to destroy its power. This is it's at the bottom of this altar that is done. But when you pour the blood to the root, the foundation of the or the bottom of the altar, you are sending the power of the blood, destroying that problem, to the root of the problem. Yes. And whenever a problem is dealt with at the root, it is finished. Hallelujah. So when we pour the blood, we are pouring into the very foundation. And I tell you, the blood can go to the foundation of your family. Mm. Many of us have very rotten backgrounds. And so the enemy takes advantage of that. But you can pour the blood of Jesus because there can be things in your background. Your father had 25 wives. And the, you have this appetite that was a satiable. With all the 25 wives, he has caught your mind. Only him. And then you are born two generations later. And you have not received Christ. Everything is scared is satanic. And you wonder why? Why can't why am I not like the other boys? You need to pour the blood to the root of where you are coming from. Oh, you say that's not for that's uh, that's not, I'm not joking. Uh, Judah had that problem. The tribe of Judah had that problem. Have you wondered why? Judah lost his wife. And instead of remarrying, he decided to go and visit prostitutes. In the process, he visited his daughter in law. And that was a big problem. Then, in the, somewhere along the line, they gave birth to David. David had all, he had four wives. That was not enough. He would climb in his roof and uh, be doing the thing done. <laughs> Pray the name of the Lord. He's, he's my father. Remember, amen? amen. Now, and I, doing that, uh, he went, he not only took the woman, he killed the husband. And he tried to cover it up. But he repented. Because later on, when he was dealt with, they would bring the beauty of Israel, Abishag, to his bosom, and he did not know her. It was uh, blessed are the men of God who will have that level of dealing. Amen? Amen. Because there are daughters who come, and many of them are problems. And if you are not dealt with, you are likely to begin to be hidden. And it's happening in many churches around. Mm -hmm. Many heads of churches sleeping with secretaries. They need to pour the blood to their foundations mm -hmm. and deal with it. Mm -hmm. Do you know it didn't stop there? Then David had Solomon. Ah, that was that would tell you to have the problem progress. Mm -hmm. Same family. When they had Solomon, the man had how many wives? Three hundred wives mm -hmm. and seven hundred concubines. Mm -hmm. One thousand women in the life of one man. <laughs> he must have died young. <laughs> because I, I don't know how he survived it. One thousand women in the life of one man. That's what it means to have something coming from your roots and following you. It expands with the next generation. It becomes worse with the next generation. Until somebody starts and says, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are your for this. Hallelujah. Amen. And you are delivered, you are set at liberty from it. That's why we are, you see all of you young people who are preaching and speaking the word of the Lord, you don't know what we, your fathers, have done. We have gone to say, enough is enough. That is talks with me. You never go beyond me. My children have to serve the Lord. You must know me. Amen. Amen. Because Iniquity runs for four generations according to scripture. But when you stand upright, it runs for a thousand generations. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me quickly round up this. You pour the blood to the foundation of every problem in your life. Never forget. If there's a problem hitting you, pour the blood to the root of it. 
they will kill it out of your system. The last but not the least way to deploy the blood is by drinking it. Drinking the blood. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. To have continuous life, you must drink in of him. How do you drink the blood? How do you drink the blood? By worshiping the Lord for his word. Thank you for his word and worshiping him. Be filled with the spirit. Amen. Amen. Be filled with the spirit. Singing to yourself, speaking to yourself in song and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. You are drinking the blood of Jesus. When you take up his word, you are taking up his flesh. When you worship him for the coming of the spirit, you are drinking of his life. And as you worship him, the life of God fills you. And you are strengthened. Ah, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. This is how you deploy the blood. The last but not the least help, and let me just mention it and go through it, is who I call the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The person of the Spirit. The Spirit is not just an active force, He is a person. He is the divine leader who organizes our journeys to the promised land. You remember God said, I will send an angel to take you to the promised land. And then, immediately God finished speaking, a cloud came in in the daytime to guide them. Then it, it turned into a, a huge ball of fire in the night time. And it leads them. Everywhere it went, they went with it, guiding them to the promised land. That is the activity of the Holy Spirit. He is the one leading you to the victory that the Lord has promised you. Amen? Amen. He is the one who creates reality awareness of the divine being to us. He introduces us to divinity through interventions and empowerments. Now, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes the Christian journey real to you. If Christianity is not real. Spiritual work with God is not real to you. It's because this personality is not there. When it comes around, he makes it real. He makes known to us information and daily strengthening nudges for our wayfaring endeavors. He's the one who will come. He will give you, drop something in your spirit that just strengthens you throughout the whole thing. Is this angel of his presence. The Bible refers to him as the angel of his presence. He leads us through trying circumstances and encourages us to overcome by his power. When we are led into situations, you know, Jesus said, you should pray that Lord lead us not into temptation. But in the wilderness, it was the glory everywhere they went that we are trying. It was the glory cloud that led them into it. So as wayfarers, when we come at trying circumstances, don't complain. Don't murmur. Look out for the presence of God, what God is saying by what has just happened. Paul had a problem with his flesh. And three times, and by three times, we mean three different seasons. In those days, when winter comes, they don't travel because it was too cold. They didn't have the technology we have today. So anywhere winter meets you, you stay there for the rest of the journey. Three different winters, Paul was seeking God's face to remove this thing that was tormenting whatever it was. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. The man was too strong. Don't allow God to enjoy you by doing strength, you know, tough man. If you are doing the Alibaba for God, you are too strong, you are tough. He will wound you. He wounded Jacob. Amen. Amen. Jacob was wrestling with God and would not scream. No, small boy. He will get injured. He refused. He told him all over his time. And from that day, the man began to live for the rest of his life. But he learned a lesson. 
The next time an angel comes around and says, let's rest, ah, no, no, you are born. All right, praise the name of the Lord. That you won't struggle with God anymore. Blessed be God for that. This is so important that we look at it. Amen? Amen. Now, this spirit is a personality. He's a person. You can lie to him. And Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5 lied to him and he killed them. Amen? Amen. Now, he speaks. He talks to us. Every time and I heard something said to my heart. It's not something. You should say someone said in my heart. Because he's a person. It's not a thing. Amen? Amen? Function of the Holy Spirit. He brings us into the land. Exodus 19. We have the outline now. Send it out. So I'm just rushing through it. He brings us to the land. The pillar of fire and clouds are symbol, we are symbols of the Holy Spirit leading us through the wilderness to our destined estate. He is our helper. That's what the Bible refers to him as our paracletos. He helps us. One calls alongside to help. He empowers us for ministry. And we must utilize that help for ministry. He helps us deal with the flesh. The Holy Spirit helps us do that. You cannot deal with your flesh and carnal nature except as it is by the Holy Spirit. We see God and we see our environment. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will take from himself and reveal it to you. He's the one who reveals things to us. The union between us and God is facilitated by the Holy Spirit. He's the one who enables us to be one with him. He's the one who sanctifies us. Jude chapter 1 verse 24. How to receive the Holy Spirit? Please, these are four quick steps. Number one, desire him. If you don't have a strong desire for the Holy Spirit, he will not come to you. Jesus said in John 7, 37, if any man thirst, let him come. The word thirst means to have a strong desire. Hallelujah. Number two, you must know and plead and claim the promises. Know the promises. Plead the promise of the Holy Spirit and claim the promises to be your own. Don't complain. As a young believer, I was seeking baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, at the Parkview Church of God, we all lined up. I was the only black person. First day, second day, and then all of a sudden, I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. And the Lord spoke some things to me about me. So I praise God. I said, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And one of the young girls said, how do you know? Her problem was, we are all the only go together. Only you are receiving. You can't receive before us. Okay. So she went, and uh, I think one of the, the sisters that was waiting with her was saying something. Following the she came to me and said, Please forgive me. I, I, I was, I was, I was jealous. I was jealous. She just confessed for my sake, Lord. She said, you know, I'm forgiving me. The Lord grant you his baptism. I think he was filled with the Holy Spirit almost to be in this. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You must know the promise and put the promise for yourself. Amen. Number three, receive. You have to let to say, I receive. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then, last but not the least, praise and worship and thank God for him. When you do that, the Holy Spirit undoubtedly comes upon you. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Let us learn how to invoke the fullness of the person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. These helpers belong to us. They are given to us. And as individuals, we must make use of what He has given to us. Amen. We must seek the help of the helpers. They are the ones that are meant to take us to the throne of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's rise to us. And we are ready to